and I just wanted to record a quick video demonstrating a shader I'd worked on for a couple of days in Blender. I'd basically been thinking of just like SNES type pixel graphics and what would be a good way to do those kinds of graphics in a stylized manner in 3D. That was like procedural and easy. Which is not to say the process of like making the shader was easy, but something that could be user-friendly, at least for me, and that I could kind of, you know, apply in projects without too much technical hassle setting anything up. Most Toon Shader tutorials I see make some use of specifically the Solidify modifier to use geometry to create the outlines, but for pixel art that doesn't work, because in perspective, the outline's gonna get smaller the further away you are. So. For these kinds of low-res graphics, something like that's not going to cut it. You'd have to do it in compositing. So that's exactly what I've set up here. If anyone wants to use this project, beware. It is not going to be easy to edit the low level of what I did here. But since I've made everything mostly into groups, I think doing things like editing materials should be relatively easy since, as you can see in this panel, it, they're just inputs as colors in the group. So, I just kind of want to show off what that looks like. Here it is in rendered view mode in Eevee, and once you actually render the image out, the result's gonna look something like this. In this smaller demo I've set up, I'm basically just showing off um, using the material ref with like reflections, so if you want to make little highlights, I have a material with that already set up. Um, in the back of the sphere is just the basic material, so the cell shader with um, outline colors, nothing else. And here's something I thought looked kind of neat, an effect where you can have an object that is has a white outline, whereas the main body is sort of like black. And that's useful for creating stuff like, if you wanted to say make a character that looks like in the Undertale style, and then apply a custom texture to it, but you want the white outlines, like in the battles, that would be probably a good use of this sort of effect. So of course, this is like a smaller scale showcase, which I'm going to be uploading to a Google Drive for anyone to use, but I'm going to show you how this looks like when applied to a more complicated scene. I was thinking of making a piece of Deltarune fan art, because I had I know I'm super late to the party, but I just recently finished the chapter 2 demo. I loved it to bits. So I decided to make a little concept sketch that I could use to create like a final render within the style of the shader. Because, once again, it's sort of based off of like cleaner SNES type pixel graphics, so a little bit more complicated. And I think Deltarune's style fits perfectly with that, so it would make, I think it would make a great showcase of what these shaders can really do when pushed to their limit. So as you can see here, I've modeled a Susie in both Dark World and Light World form. This is the, uh, the final result. So as you can see, it's not perfect. Of course, for anything rendered in Eevee, there might be some mild artifacting within the shadows. You can sort of see that here in the locker. But for the most part, it looks pretty solid. I think it fits the style very well. And if I just showed this to someone, I don't think they'd automatically assume it was something that was made in 3D. Which I'm really happy to say. I'm not so sure about you watching it, but I'm pretty stoked with how it turned out. Of course, I've put a bunch of switches in the compositor, so say if you don't want it to be super pixelated, if you wanted to render it at full resolution, that is totally an option. So here you can turn pixelization off to get the full res image, and here you can even turn the outline off, and this creates like a very, very smooth sort of, you know, flat shaded look. And I think I almost like this just as much, personally. I think that the sort of like, flat, lineless art style is really, really underrated. So for stuff like that, I think it turns out pretty well. You know, and you can mix and match the different settings, like here is it, with lineless, but pixelated. If I zoom out, you can see that it is very much node spaghetti, to the fullest extent. 
as I said, if you want to try and make modifications to this, definitely be warned, it is not an easy task. But even still, I'm going to try and sort of explain what's going on here. If I tab into this group, you can see that it is the mask for the outline. And the way I've done it to make sure it's as comprehensive as possible is that I tried to combine several different outlines into one using several different passes. So for one of the masks that I'm using, I generate a normal map for anything that's part of the shader. And the good thing about that is that usually in illustration, you have a contour where two things start to face a different direction. Like if there's a sudden change in the edge of an object, usually you want to make sure to mark that or represent it somehow. And so that's done, I believe, in... where's the normal? Here. So this is the pass for the normal map. Once again, this one's just simply change in direction. And you could modify these values if you wanted to, to say, make the filters less or more sensitive. I think it's pretty fine where it is right now, so... Here, I've s used the difference in color between different objects to mark thicker outlines. That way it can represent both colors rather than clipping between the two, which was sort of an aliasing issue I was getting. I'm not sure exactly how much more effective this is, like, actually, but it seemed to help improve the clarity for me, so... For this mask, I'm using the Z layer, or like the depth from the camera, to define contours. So, even though direction gets m most of the work done, if you have two objects that have faces that are pointing the same way, it's not gonna recognize them as separated. For that, you need depth. And most of these kinds of shaders I've seen, specifically in Unreal Engine, work off depth very much just in this way, so something like this is actually more typical, but rarely do I usually see it in combination with several other methods. Putting all the masks together, I think, definitely makes for a much, much more quality outline. Not perfect by any means, but pretty good. So after you have the mask, it's pretty simple. What it does is basically just take the different render passes that my uh, material group generates for any of the pixelated cell shader objects. So the rest of the task it has to do isn't super complicated. Basically all it does is just combine the separate layers that my uh, node group uses inside all the materials with the effect. Essentially what the inputs for that amount to are two colors for light and shadow on the surface of an object, and then light and shadow for the outlines, and those are all basically just image inputs, which means that if you want to add extra effects like that shine, you can just create it separately and then put it right through the shader and it should work perfectly. So for example, if I were to select this piece of hair, you can see it has sort of a shiny effect, and with that how it works is here you have the pixel cell shader node group with the four inputs. And to create the effect separate from that shader alone, I have this little uh, shine mask here that, if I can enter, uses a glossy shader and then converts it to black and white and basically takes anything that's super shiny and makes a mask out of it. Then I just put that into a mix note with the colors for glossy and non-glossy surfaces and put that right back into the light and it creates a pretty solid shine effect, and I think all the other shiny objects in the scene basically use a copy of this same material, with the same principle working behind it. So uh, yeah, that's my sort of stylized pixel art blender shader, and feel free to use this in any of your own projects, um, I'd appreciate the credit though, and uh, yeah, that'll pretty much be about it. If you ever have a sort of artistic effect, or vision that you want to accomplish, even for someone like me, who's not as experienced in Blender as they wish they were, just know that if you can think of it, there's probably a way to make it. And hopefully this will show other people that, you know, with enough work and effort, 
you can make almost any effect you want in Blender, really. Thanks for watching.